Good morning YouTube, my name is Justin. I run this channel here called Bike and Bird, where we do everything from gear reviews, bike builds, group rides, you name it. If that sounds like something you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today we're going to be reviewing the Simpson Ghost Bandit. Let's get into it. Arguably one of the most recognizable helmets in the Cruiser game, the Simpson Ghost Bandit is the go-to for Dyna Bros and other Harley-focused enthusiasts. This is a description of the Ghost Bandit straight from Simpson. Designed 100% with motorcycle riders in mind, the Simpson Ghost Bandit is prepared to handle just about any type of riding in killer style and complete comfort. The lightweight shell has been aerodynamically tuned for motorcycle riding and is fully ventilated for maximum airflow when and where you need it most. Integrated speaker and microphone pockets make it easy to install your favorite communication device and a drop down stun visor makes riding through changing light conditions a breeze. Let's first take a look at some of the features on this helmet and then I'll give you my opinions on if those claims hold any water or not. This helmet is made of a lightweight composite shell. It is both DOT and ECE certified, features tool free shield removal, has a interchangeable drop down sun visor, dual adjustable chin vents, and also features a removable chin skirt. This helmet weighs in at 3.46 pounds and at the time of recording is coming in at 449.95. I do wanna point out before we jump in that this helmet is clearly not how it comes from the factory. First off, the graphics are something I added. All this chunky stuff that you see around it has been added. This dark tent visor can be added for $60. It also features a pin lock anti-fog system which you can get for $35. And I've also swapped out the drop down visor for a clear visor. I'll talk about that here in a second. You can also get that in clear, orange, yellow, and I think a light tint, all for uh, about 40 bucks a piece. So in case you've never seen any of my other reviews, I like to break each part of this helmet or whatever product we're reviewing into sections and then give that a one through 10 score and then tally the score up at the end. One of course being the worst, 10 being the best. So first things first, let's start off with style. Everyone knows if you look good, you ride good, that's a fact, you can Google it. I'm personally gonna give this helmet an eight because it's got that automotive moto crossover style and Simpson was kind of the first company to pioneer that. It also, to me personally, just looks really badass and intimidating. There's a reason why it's the go-to for all the Dyna Bros. With four different colorways, if you include the carbon fiber version and seven different shield options, it makes about 28 ways that you can kind of personalize it to make it your own. And then of course, if you're super vain like me, you can go ahead and put stickers all over it to make sure that people know who you are. Next up on our list is visor quality. This is going to focus on the visor itself, not the mechanism or anything like that, just the optic system. So this one is a little bit hard to rate. Reason being is that with the stock visor, the anti-fog functionality is pretty much non-existent, but once you introduce the, the $35 pin lock option, the performance is top notch. So because of that, I have to give this optic system a seven. Field of view is really good. I wouldn't say it's the best I've ever ridden with, but it doesn't leave you wanting anymore. Also with the pin lock system, it does have the option to get tinted style uh, pin locks. So for me, I went ahead and went with the dark smoke visor and the dark smoke pin lock. Reason being, I live in South Texas. 90% of the time that we're riding, it's in very bright sunlight. So I doubled up on the tent and it's actually extremely dark. It makes it riding in the sunlight very comfortable. You don't have to wear any sunglasses. I mentioned earlier that uh, I swapped out the interior visor. Reason being is that when it comes stock, this uh, visor is tinted. I have swapped out with a clear. Like I said, I usually ride during the daytime, but if I do get caught out at night, I don't like to carry around riding glass or anything like that. So I flip that down, boom, my eyes are protected. Now you're probably saying that doesn't sound like the most comfortable option and you're right, it's not, but I'll get to that here in category three, which is the visor performance, such as the hinges, changing it out, etc. As far as visor performance, I have to give this a 10. It is literally my favorite thing on this helmet. 
With the ability to run two separate visors, it really does work in every riding condition. Like I just mentioned, if you get caught out at night, you don't have any riding glasses with you, simply flip that down, you're good to go. But if you were going to be doing extended riding within uh, the nighttime, or say for example, if you were going on a road trip and the sun dropped on you real quick, you do have the option to swap out this visor with zero tools. So if you were carrying your extra visor with you, you wouldn't have to carry, you know, six different tools or even one to swap out this visor. The other thing I'd like to focus on is the detents. These detents are heavy, they're strong, you can pretty much lock it in whatever position you want. It also has this locking tab here on the side that once it's flipped up, the visor will not open until that tab is released. But even without that tab engaged, if you have it halfway down, I can personally speak from experience that you can be riding at over 100 miles an hour and this visor is not going to open up on you. My only complaint on this entire visor system is that it only features this lift tab on the left side. I see this trend within the motorcycle helmets and I don't get it. Nine times out of 10, when I am lifting up my visor, it is when I'm coming to a stop or at a stop sign, AKA all the times I am using my clutch. I don't like having my bike in neutral at stops in case something comes behind me. I don't have to take that extra second to get the bike into gear and get the hell out of the way. With that being said, I don't see why companies don't just add a second, second tab over here on the side. That way, no matter which hand you have free, you are able to lift it up. But like I said, I'm not going to count it off just because every other company is doing the exact same thing. Moving on to category number four, which is comfort. Now, unfortunately, comfort is one of those things where it's gonna be every person thinks of it differently type of things. But for me personally, I have to give it an eight. Starting off with the positives, the antibacterial lining on the inside of this helmet is one of the best linings I have ever had. I have to compare it to almost like a like an athletic t-shirt type feel. It doesn't feel like hot, it doesn't get hot, it breathes very well. It just feels very good. The break-in period was surprisingly comfortable. The only part that you really feel it in is in the cheek pads, for me at least. I, I'm pretty chubby in the face. so. It did press up against my cheeks quite a bit when we first started off, but I'd say after the first two or three rides, those pads started to break in and it doesn't push in nearly as much as it used to. So where this helmet really loses points for me is the fit as far as the shape. Now, like I said, this is gonna be different for everyone. I have more of a round head. This helmet is more of an oval. It's not super oval, but it does have more of an oval shape to it. That creates a pinch point right about the top of my ears, basically like if if I was a chick and had an industrial piercing, that's where it pinches my ears. If I'm going on a short couple hour ride, I don't feel it, it doesn't even become an issue. But when you're talking 12 plus hours, it definitely does get uncomfortable. Temperature wise, this helmet performs pretty well. I've ridden with this helmet from the high 50s all the way up to the high 90s, and the temperature stays good. And most of that is due to the vents, which brings me to number five, venting. This helmet surprised me the most within this category. Main reason being is that these auto crossover helmets aren't known for having the best ventilation. But this one is above the trend at a nine. This helmet features vents up here on the left and the right. You are able to close them individually left and right. That for me as a motor vlogger is an awesome feature. Might not be so cool for you guys, but having the ability to shut off the side that my microphone's on was a huge plus for me. It also features exhaust vents up top, which link to these channels here on the front right here uh, just below the visor line. So that pulls hot air out. It also pulls hot air out the sides back here. So you have a total of six vents all around this helmet. So like I mentioned in the last category, I've ridden all the way up into the high 90s and heat has not been an issue with this helmet. Number six, aerodynamics. Even with all this extra moto vlogging gear, you see my uh, camera set up here in the front, as well as my power pack in the back, and my Cardo Pack Tog Bold here on the side. This leaves nothing to be desired. The aerodynamics of this helmet are surprisingly good, so I have to give it a 10. Even with riding about 12 hours at highway speed to this helmet, I had little to no neck fatigue. Despite its super wide profile, it does cut through the air extremely well, but you can hear it. Number seven is going to be the noise. Now the number one complaint I get from every other owner of this helmet is that it's loud. So expectedly, 
it scored a five. I'm not usually one to complain about loud helmets because 90% of the time I'm riding, I have a hearing protection known as plug phones. It's basically like uh, headphones that play music but also provide the same hearing protection as earplugs. So even at highway speeds, I'm usually not hearing it. But I did do a few test rides around town with this helmet. I did it on the highway, back roads, things like that. And good God, I can't even imagine riding eight hours on the highway with this thing. Your ears would be throbbing afterwards. So if you're the person that likes to crush miles but hates wearing any sort of ear protection, might not be the best way to go. Next up on our list is the chin strap. The chin strap is nothing to write home about. It's your typical standard 2D ring retention system. Where it does shine is it does have the same antibacterial lining that it does have on the cheek pads all the way down the length of the strap. That way your throat is completely protected from the actual strap material. Where it loses a point for me is that the snap button to retain the chin strap is pretty small and it's kind of hard to find when you have gloves on, but that's why I personally rock the uh, ride wear quick detach system. Number nine is price. I have to give the Ghost Bandit a seven. And the reason I get to this number is taking into account the competitors within the same type of genre, the weight, the features, and the safety rating. Most would agree that the biggest competitors for the Ghost Bandit would be the Bell Eliminator and the Lane Splitter. The Lane Splitter is coming in at $249.95 and the Bell Eliminator is coming in at $399.95, both of which are cheaper than the uh, Ghost Bandit here. Although this helmet does have the same safety ratings as those two, it does have a couple other options that bump it up a couple points. The main reason I give it a seven is that although the way this helmet sits right now is pretty good for me. I enjoy it quite a bit. I did have to spend another $135 to get it to where it sits today. Which means all in, this helmet as it sits is about $585. If it came with a tinted visor and a pen lock or at least some type of anti-fog system, or if it just cost around the $349 range, it would jump that uh, score up quite a bit. And then last but not least is going to be safety. All things considered, I have to give this helmet an 8. Boasting both the DOT and ECE certifications, the only thing this helmet is missing is the blessing from the snow gods. Both DOT and ECE test quite different factors, but coincidentally complement each other pretty well. Simpson is known for their high safety standards, and the Ghost Bandit is no exception. So let's go ahead and recap. The Simpson Ghost Bandit came out swinging with an eight for the badass style, but took a seven due to the lack of an included anti-fog system. Anti-fog or not, that visor is attached to top-notch hinge technology that boasts superior detents and requires zero tools, and also features a drop-down interior visor, earning its first 10. Moving inside the helmet, Comfort and Vents earn the Ghost Bandit an eight and nine respectively. Limited helmet buffeting and little to no neck fatigue help scoot the helmet score along with an Another 10, but took a small hit due to the expected noise issue earning its first 5. A solid chin strap got a 9, and a less than stellar price comparison earned it a 7. Rounding out the list was a safety score of 8 due to the lack of Snell rating. Add all that up, carry the 7, and you've got an overall score of 81 out of 100. After a thousand miles with this helmet, I get the craze over the look and the style. Are there better helmets out there around the same price? Absolutely. But there's none out there that I know of that fit this same style and genre that possess the same quality features that the Ghost Bandit possesses. And before anyone asks, no, I will not be uh, reviewing the Mod Bandit. In case you don't know what that is, it's essentially the same helmet just with a slit in the side and this whole thing folds up. And I'll give you one, uh, one guess as to why I wouldn't do that. Yeah, it's it's because of all this this stuff. All this stuff isn't wireless, guys. All this stuff has cables and wires running all through this helmet, because that's that's what I do. That's that's how this channel runs. That's how I pay for all these uh, these fancy cameras and lights and stuff. That's filming all this stuff is by you know recording these videos. But I will say that I have seen and held the Mod Bandit in person, and it's essentially the exact same thing as this with the modular capability. So if you're someone who likes that modular capability or wants that, just take everything I said and add in is modular. 
So guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. If you do end up purchasing this helmet through the link in the description, go ahead and enter code BIKEINBIRD, add a Get Lowered t-shirt to your order and get it completely free. If you have any questions on this product, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. I'll answer them as soon as I possibly can. Other than that, if you like this video, please hit that like button. It does do a ton for the channel. And if you haven't already, I highly suggest you punch that subscribe button as to not miss any future videos. Other than that, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.